portraits of a planet. What can you see of Earth and of civilization from space? My style of portrait is that of Earth at night. Here's Spain, all of Spain, Portugal, North Africa, and much of France. From a space vantage point, you could see structure on the order of half a continent. And this adds information that you can apply to observations made from the tops of mountains, from airplanes, and from boots on the ground. Now, you look at Spain, and it's patently obvious where civilization is from the way we sprinkle our light bulbs out over the surface of this globe. Florida, all of Florida, from Key West to Tallahassee into Georgia, you can see Atlanta there, all in one picture. And it becomes patently obvious, again, where are human beings located because we all like to uh, become active after the sun comes down and our lighting uh, uh, basically adds more hours to our day, more years to our life because we could continue to do meaningful things after the sun sets. We like our lighting. New Orleans, one of my favorite places. It's wedged between the darkness of Lake Pontchartrain and the Mississippi River Delta. So where there is no light also carries meaning when you're looking at where light is and where light isn't and where are the human beings, where is civilization. Let's take a closer look at New Orleans. There's a grid work of streets. And in this grid work, the streets are well illuminated by the design of our street lighting. The design of street lighting can minimize stray light. And stray light is light that beams into space without providing meaningful illumination for human activity. And you can see there's a fair amount of darkness in between the major streets, except in special regions, like you see that bright region right in the middle. That's the French Quarter, and even though this was taken like 2 a.m. local time, you can tell people are out there active and having a good time in New Orleans. Monterey, Mexico, still has the major streets illuminated, but the whole urban area is also illuminated, and this is due to stray light. Sao Paulo, Brazil. Notice there's different colors. The older parts of town, mercury vapor lighting. The newer boroughs, sodium vapor lighting. So you could see the transition in technology that we have chosen as human beings in terms of illuminating our cities. Cairo, Egypt, same thing. You could see mercury vapor lighting, you could see sodium vapor lighting, and the pharaohs like their pyramids well lit. If you know where to look, you can see the pyramids in there. This is over Singapore. Look at those colors. This is a transition that cities are going through now from mercury vapor, sodium vapor, now LEDs. And LEDs can be made in all kinds of colors and human beads like colors. And from orbit, it looks like a Christmas tree down there. But you see the greeds, you see the blues, the purples, the reds, the yellows. It's beaming something into space about who we are. I was looking down at Earth. And for a moment, I thought I was looking up at some unknown constellation. I call this the fishing boat constellation. This, this, these are fishing boats off the coast of China using intense xenon lights to bring in the catch of the day. Now, there are natural phenomena that is masked by daytime and best seen at night. And some of this is seen 
in time exposures where you, you start off with an exposure that's short and you keep increasing it and increasing it maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes for a time exposure. So they start off with stars at pinpoints. And I'm gonna show a short uh, movie clip here that shows how these time exposures are made. So there, stars are pinpoints. Orbital motion makes the stars trail in curved arcs. And then cities streak by on the surface of Earth, again, due to orbital motion. And you end up with this time exposure that could show natural phenomena that you can't see any other way. And notice there's this thing that's sitting on the side of Earth, that's green thing, it looks like a slice of key lime pie. That's our atmosphere on edge. This is one of my favorite time exposures. I call it galactic pinwheel. And you can see cities streaking by on Earth. You can see the stars rotating, all due to orbital motion. But see all those little white dots? Those are bolts of lightning over time with orbital motion in between. So there is recorded the time history of a single thunderstorm. You look at the atmosphere on edge. It's translucent. You can see starlight coming through from behind. And you'll, if you look close, you can see that the slope of the star motion changes as it goes into deeper and deeper layers. So you can ascertain things about the density structure, the layer structure in our atmosphere. Another time exposure. The pastel colors come from LED lighting. This is over Southeast Asia. And again, with the atmosphere, the scale height on that is about 120 kilometers. And that's not all our atmosphere, but most of our atmosphere. And that's what we have that separates us from the vacuum of space. Now, all of these pictures that I've taken and all the pictures that any astronaut has taken from the International Space Station, they are in the public domain and available from NASA website, Gateway to Astronaut Photography. So you, for your projects to raise attention for what this planet is about and what civilization is doing on this planet, you've got access to all these pictures. Just go to this website. There's a search engine. Well, I take a little investment in order to learn how to use it. But you can find, you can find day pictures, you can find night pictures, you can find pictures over specific regions of Earth. Portraits of a planet. What could you see of Earth and of civilization from space. The length scale of half a continent allows observations that can complement observations made in other ways, airplanes, mountaintops, boots on the ground. And all this information is available to you all through the public domain websites that NASA has. And you can use these images for whatever projects, raise attention to whatever you are doing. My specialty happens to be imaging portraits of Earth at night. Thank you.